Hello everybody and welcome back to another CB Showtunes tutorial. Now today what we're going to be getting into is how to change your textures while pressing the mouse key button while our mouse of course is over it and of course that our player is on it. So how this is going to work is very simple. I'm going to show you guys what we got here and then of course we're going to get into how we did it. So let's go and test this out. Now the first thing that you guys want to do is test out just any random object that's not touching the player. So what I'm going to do is I'm simply going to select this object and hold it down and it's not going to change anything, which is what we wanted to do, right? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my mouse over, say for instance, something that's touching the player. Now let me hold it down. And as you can see, it completely just changed it, right? And of course, say for instance, I do another one that the character's touching. Perfect. And if you notice, while I'm holding this down, it changes these into different shades, right? So, say for instance, I hold this down for a little bit longer and it changes into that, right? So each one that I do changes it into something a little bit different, which is pretty cool. So we'll get into how we did that as well. And of course, as you can see, if I hold on anywhere else, it's not going to mess with it. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing first, I'm going to go ahead and change maximize on play off so we can actually check it out. All right. So the first thing that you're going to need to get is, of course, um, textures. So I downloaded these off Google. If you actually want to make a more realistic transition, I would actually make these textures yourself or find a professional that knows how to do it. The next thing that you want to do with your textures is make sure that they're all Sprite, 2D, and UI on the texture type. Go over here to the texture types and just simply change it to that if it's not. Also, you're going to change the mesh type to full rect. It's automatically going to be set the type or type you want it to be set to full rect. That way we can adjust it. And once you got that done, just simply press apply and you're good. Okay. So how we got our first texture on the scene was very simple. We just simply clicked on the texture that is down here inside our project panel and dragged it into our hierarchy. The next thing that you're going to do, just for example purposes, I'm going to show you guys right here. Um, you're going to come over here to the sprite render and change the draw mode to um, tile. From there, I just simply change the size on the width to 1 and the height to 1. And if you guys want to see that, right there. So once we got that done, we're going to basically add in a box collider 2D. Now this is a 2D object, so you do need to make sure that it is um, a 2D collider. So we're going to go ahead and add that. Make sure that you open it up and adjust its size to the sprite render, um, which was our one by one. So let's go ahead and do that. Perfect. And now since we got that, we're going to need to add a script. Now this script is actually a very simple script that I created for this specific purpose. Um, so before I actually add it on to my uh, grass texture, we're going to go ahead and head over to the script itself. So if you don't have a script set up, let's go ahead and do that. Uh, right click inside your project panel, go over to create and simply select C sharp. Now I called mine change texture. You can call it whatever you want to be called and let's go and pull it up. Okay. So right here, um, the first thing that you're going to do is set up a public sprite and, of course, put in like two little, uh, I guess you could say, brackets um, for an array. And then we're going to call this current texture. This allows us to plug in as many textures as we want inside the uh, Unity editor. And, of course, let's go and check that out. So I'm going to go ahead and pull that back a little bit, select our grass, and I'm going to drag on our uh, change texture and open this up. So, as you can see right here, you're not going to see these two individual pieces right there, but you'll see this curved texture. If you select that arrow, it's going to say size. So we're going to up the size to three, and it will show three different sprites. Now, since we changed these to uh, sprite, 2D, and UI, um, you should be able to just drag these on there. We want dirt to be at the element two, grass to be at element zero, and then grass, dirt, to element one or however many textures that you want it to be. 
So the more textures you have, the more realistic it's going to appear. Okay, so let's head back over into the script and we're going to take a look at this next uh, setup. So we have a private float called curlife, which is equal to one. Now this right here, you can adjust it to whatever value you, you want it to be. I just set it to one as equal to 100%. So we can use floats as in, say for instance, 99%, 88% or whatever we want it to be um, just by adding that one as our max value. Now, whenever you're going into the decimal system though, make sure that you do have this set up as a um, float. If you want it to be an integer, you can do that too. It doesn't really matter as long as you have it as a whole number whenever working with integers. Okay, enough of that boring stuff. Okay, so we got a public bool called is over. This allows us to tell if our mouse is over the object and we have diggable. So this basically says if a player's touching it, then it's diggable. We also have a private void start. You don't need this to be private if you don't want to. In fact, this works for every single one of these voids. You do not need them private. So you can have it public. You don't even have to have that on there. It's up to you. So we have our void start and we have is over is equal to false. Basically just saying we don't want this to be true. Now, normally we would set diggable to equal true or false, but I set that up inside a later function. So um, yeah, we'll get to that in a couple of seconds or minutes, you know, how long, however long it takes us to get over there. Okay, underneath your void update function, you're going to put this simple equation. You're gonna say if input.get mess mouse button down, or mouse button, I mean, and we're gonna set this mouse button to equal to zero. So this is our left click. And as long as we're holding this down, and and is over, so if our mouse is over, and and diggable. So we basically have three different, uh, I guess you say equations that have to equal to be true for this to work. And we're gonna say cur life minus equals a set number. Now, the more higher this is, the faster it's going to uh, turn. The lower this is, the slower it's gonna turn. So keep that in mind as well. Uh, so the more sprites you have inside there, then the slower you want this to go, or yeah, I'd say the slower that you want this to go. Uh, that's just easier. Okay, now right here, we're going to be setting up a very, very simple function for our uh, change. So what you need to keep in mind is you're going to have a greater than and less than. So this is going to be if cur life is less than one, which is going to be the max value, and then cur life is greater than a 0.75. So this is going to be your minor value. Okay, now this may sound a little bit confusing since we're using less than and greater than. Um, but basically what we're just saying is as long as it's less than one and it's greater than a 0.75, then we're going to say set the sprite to current texture zero or grass. And then we're going to say else if cur life the greater number, or is less than the greater number, which will be, of course, the lesser number of the top, and then cur life is greater than a 0.25. This will basically just be setting the next low value, um, and you're just going to keep repeating this process down, down, down. Now, as I said before, the more elements you have or the more sprites you have, the more realistic it's going to be, which means that you need to set these individual pieces to I guess you could say smaller increments. Now I have set mine to about 50, well 25 in the first, 50 in the second, and then um, I believe 15 in the third. Uh, so just keep in mind, just set your increments smaller if you have more textures that you're wanting to work with. And of course just change the current texture number to whichever texture it is. And then last, we're going to say else if cur life is less than or equal to zero, basically saying once we hit the bottom, destroy game object. It means it's gone and we're not worried about it. Okay, so outside of the void update function, we're going to create a new void called on mouse over. Now this is a very useful function, basically saying if a mouse is over a collision, then or a trigger and all, then it will allow us to mess with it. So 
we're just going to say is over is equal to true. So as long as our mouse is over it. And then we're going to create a new void on mouse exit. And this is just going to say is over is equal to false. So that's self-explanatory. You know your mouse is over it. It's true. Your mouse is off of it. It's false. You know, that's, that's just how it works, right? Okay, now this is how we're going to set diggable. So we have a public void on collision stay. Now this I actually would advise setting to public. Um, for some reason it was being very bothersome when I was trying to set it as private. So go ahead and set that as public. Uh, one of the few ones I guess you could say. And we're going to say on collision stay 2D. You got to make sure that it is a 2D. And you're also going to put this little stupid thing here. And it's going to basically say collision 2D collision. Okay. Once you got that set up, we're going to say if collision.gameObject.compare tag player, then diggable is equal to true. So as long as our player is inside the uh, collider or hitting the collider, then this will be true. And then, of course, on exit, and that means anything, it's going to be equal to false. That way we can't dig anything that's not uh, true. So let's go and take a look at this. So we have our uh, created object. And of course, if you take a look at our example player, we did ex put the um, tag as player. Now we're going to press play and take a look. So if I hold this down, as you can see, it changes. Perfect. Now let's go ahead and press play off again. Go over to the scene, select this texture and drag it over here. Gonna press play. And this time take a look over this. So is over and diggable. So if I put my mouse over, is over is equal to true. Take it off, it's not true. Um, if I click here, you know nothing happens. If I put it over, try clicking on it, it's not diggable. Perfect. All right, I hope you guys like this tutorial. If you like it, please leave a like. Subscribe, check out some of my other videos. If you have a comment or a question, leave it inside the comment section below. And I'll see you guys next time.